there are only three things that you need to create the freedom to live the life that you want. Number one, leverage. Number two, assets. And number three, purpose. And you can start creating a life that is going to guarantee you having these three things right now. It doesn't need to be this 10 year journey where you take years and years of learning and learning before you can have these things. I have these things myself. I've built a life around these three features leverage, assets, and purpose. And I'm going to give you five protocols that you can use to create this life for yourself because you can set up your life to get these things efficiently and quickly. It doesn't need to be this 10 year journey. So here's the five step protocol that you can use to create a life that's going to give you more freedom. Number one is enjoying difficulty. And this is the most difficult part of the protocol, enjoying difficulty, which is literally in the name. There's a quote I'm going to share with you. Strength does not come from winning. Your struggles develop your strengths. When you go through hardships and decide to not surrender, that is strength. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, the biggest secret for me closing over a million in sales and earning multiple six figures myself in my own businesses uh, and as a closer in the last couple of years is that I deeply enjoy discomfort. I very, very much enjoy discomfort to a point where it's, it's kind of psycho. I love being uncomfortable. I hate when I'm comfortable. I hate when I just feel safe and everything is perfect and everything is okay. And to be honest, sometimes this hurts me because when everything is smooth and everything is perfect, I tend to disrupt it and go out and search for more discomfort. But one of the biggest secrets that's helped me have a lot of success where a lot of the people I started with in this journey of business, I started with in this journey of sales, I surpassed them. The reason is because I was so comfortable with discomfort, as in I enjoy discomfort so much to a psychotic level where I always want to challenge myself and push myself to be uncomfortable that it gave me an advantage in terms of competition. So an advantage meaning where I could push myself and I could learn new skills and I could adopt those skills faster. I could be a better leader. I could be a better communicator. I could, you know, show up as the best version of myself and get what I wanted, attack what I wanted because I'm so comfortable being in a space of discomfort, if that makes sense. It means I love being uncomfortable. That's what it adds up to. Now, one of the things that I'm doing is I'm always looking for ways that I can push myself out of my comfort zone. And one thing I've seen is most people in this is probably you. Most people enjoy being comfortable. One of the worst ways to be comfortable is to be comfortable in your purpose. It's one of the worst things you could do. So the first step to the protocol is enjoying discomfort. It's enjoying difficulty. It's something that I call traveling the beaten path. The beaten path means the path that is difficult, the path that is full of hardship, the path that isn't just easy because success is not easy, but the road to freedom, the road to the life that you want, where you can give back to the people in your life who matter, that road the only way you get there is through difficulty and is through hardship. And one of the ways I've been able to traverse that road and be on that path is I love difficulty. I love discomfort so much. I love feeling uncomfortable because I know when I feel uncomfortable, if I make the right decisions in terms of my business, in terms of how I sell, like how I have sales calls, in terms of even how I date, you know, communicating with and talking to people that are what most people would say are out of their league, that challenges me as a man to grow. In an example of this in purpose, what I see a lot of people do is they aim too low and you're probably aiming too low. This happens to a lot of men. You tell yourself, I can be someone who makes 5K per month. Like right now we have a group, Quantum Level, it's free. You can join below. I train people in sales. And when people apply to join the group, I see people aiming in terms of income. I'm like, what's your income goal? How much money do you wanna make realistically? And what I see some of them saying is 5K per month. 5K a month, that's your goal. Your goal, your goal is to make $5,000 a month. $5,000 a month doesn't even put you in, don't quote me on this, but it doesn't put you in a top 10% income bracket in the West, genuinely, in most countries at least. Aiming for something that you think is just attainable but is comfortable to you, that is still comfort. You know, you can be comfortable even in your purpose. I used to aim for 50K a month, now my aim is 100K per month. No joke, when I started this channel, I thought 50K a month was normal. And then I made 20K months consistently back-to-back -back times and I realized I'm gonna hit 100K per month. That's my goal. By January, I wanna be at 100K. First time I'm saying this out loud. So. I'm consistently looking for discomfort that is aligned with my success. So the future I wanna have, the results I want to have, and I have a clear vision of that future, which I'll share with you next, it's very important. How can you be uncomfortable on the path to that future? Because if you are comfortable, odds are that you're not taking the right steps or you're not putting the right systems and processes and protocols in place to be the man who is going to have those results or be the man who deserves those results. You know, the second 
part of this protocol, this five-step protocol that you can use is something that we call future memory, okay? Future memory comes from the book Psycho-Cybernetics and they don't use the word future memory. Maxwell Maltz, who wrote the book, he doesn't use the word future memory, but I love this. I'm gonna give you a quote here, two quotes actually. Your nervous system cannot tell the difference between an actual experience and one that is vividly imagined. So future memory is seeing a specific future as an actual occurrence. I just did this today. Regularly, I will meditate on a vision of a future that I want to have, and I will sit with the smells, the sights, the sounds, the tastes, the experience, the sensory touch, the feelings. I will visualize that in my head, me being in that experience, and I will take it upon myself as a memory. So it's not me just saying this is something I want, but I will create a phantom memory about an experience I have in the future. I'm giving you guys the sauce. This is how psycho I am. I'm telling you what I do. This is how I push myself to success. I do really difficult shit all the time and I enjoy it. Number two is I trick myself into believing that my future self has already happened. That's what I do. So I meditate on this and I see it, I feel it, I experience it, and my brain cannot distinguish between that and an actual memory. So my brain adopts this thought pattern, it adopts this phantom experience as a real one. Future memory is seeing the specific future as an actual occurrence. And I also want you to understand this quote. Pay attention because this is deep. You must learn to see yourself as a child of God, a seed of the infinite. You must see yourself as one who has been endowed with the power to make the finite mind, the finite self, do the things you want it to do. You must, if you want success, you must become the man who believes he is entirely deserving of and worthy of that future of freedom that you want to have but you must consciously embody and take that vision and bring it into your presence and control your mind. I'm telling you this right now, my friend, you watching this, you don't understand just how insane I take this in terms of my personal life. My mind is a constant battleground. I'm constantly battling myself to push. I'm constantly battling myself to take the hard road. I'm constantly battling myself to live and fulfill this future vision that I have because I know there's other people who are pushing towards it. I know everyone wants the same goals as me. Like I know there are right now mentors of mine, coaches that I've worked with, sales mentors, business mentors that are working just as much or harder than I am and they're moving towards their goals at lightning speed. They're gonna take the clients that I wanna have. They're gonna, ha they're gonna have the impact in the world that I wanna have. I can't allow that to happen. So what I can control, I can't control them. I'm rooting for them as friends, but I can control what I do. And I wanna take every single tool in my arsenal, which is traveling the difficult path, that's number one, and then future memory, and I adopt this onto myself. Number three, going back to this point, because I want you to have this full commitment to your future self, I want you to see a future for yourself, and I want you to embody these beliefs, these habits, and behaviors of the man who has that future now. But you can only do this properly if you use speed, if you do it with speed. Good things come to those who wait. That's a very passive approach to success and it doesn't work. It can work with luck, sure. Good things come to those who wait. I heard a lot of people use this in relationships. I'll oh, just wait for the right girl to show up. Yes, but you can't bet on that. And I don't like leveraging luck. I'm not a fan of luck. I like having control over my destiny. I like having control over exactly how things are going to happen in my relationships in my future. Now, before you implement speed, I want you to think. I have a question for you. I'm going to teach you how to implement speed and how to move to your goals quickly, but I have a question. How quickly do you want to get to freedom? How quickly? Because this is a, a question you need to answer. You have to answer this question first. If you want to get there quickly and you want to have control over how you get there, you need speed. You cannot do it without speed. And by speed, what I mean is my April feels like the end of summer. Like right now, I'm already thinking I'm too close to December where business slows down. I need to move even faster. I'm living my life and running my business three months ahead of everyone else. I'm serious. I'm running my business three months ahead of all my peers. And the reason I'm doing this is because I know they're moving with speed, right? And I'm in a circle of peers, a circle of, of men that are pushing me towards success and I'm fueling them. I want to see them win every day, but I also want to win because I know that the money that I want, they want the same money. So someone's got to get it. We can all get pieces of it, but I want to get more and I want them to have success, but I want to get more right? So what I need to do is I need to operate on a faster timeline than all my competitors. And you need to adopt this into your life if you want to gain success quickly. I ask this to people on sales calls. It's a specific question that I ask in the protocols and the scripting that we give. And I have this in my free community. You can come train with me and learn it. The link is down below. It's called quantum level. You can learn and practice sales with me. I use this question all the time. It's very important. Here's how it sounds. 
I'm just curious. Right now, the way you're doing things, do you feel like you're going to see the changes you want and see the results that you want in your life as quickly as you want them? Or do you feel like you're going to need to make some small changes to how you do things to see those results quickly? I ask that question. Why? Because what I want to know when I'm talking to prospects is about their, their relationship to speed. Most people want to get there quickly. They do. And then I help them. I help make that happen. They come in. They pay. You know, I close the deal, bring them in, and the company I work with gives the results. Amazing. Most people want things to happen quickly. But the question I have for you right now is, are you willing to do the work to make this happen quickly for yourself? Are you willing to work with speed? This is exactly what we do in our community. Quantum level, we move with speed. If you want to be a part of a community, it's free to be a part of this community. You will not find a more supportive tribe of men out there who are moving towards self, self-improvement, self self-mastery and learn sales. So it's a sales community, a sales training community. The link is down below. It's completely free to join. Come on in. We'll be happy to have you. We're going to push you. You can talk to me, talk to my guys inside, and we're going to help you win. we got some winners in there. Speed is the game. That's the game of this year. Number four is delayed gratification. Delayed gratification. Do you need to feel good now? Do you need to feel good all the time? Do you, do you have to chase pleasure? It's similar to enjoying difficulty. It's the same thing, closely related. I enjoy the boredom of the journey. I enjoy the boredom of the journey of success. I enjoy the slow grind. I'm tricking myself constantly when I'm sitting at the laptop and I'm editing a video or I'm preparing scripts and training for the guys that we have in QL, quantum level. Whatever I'm doing, whatever these tasks are, they're boring. They're not fun. They're not the stimulus. It's not being in the club, right? It's not going and chasing chicks. It's not that. 100% it's not. It's not fast. It's not fun. It's not playing the video game that gives you stimulation. It's boring. It's a slow grind. But I do that because it allows me to have the freedom that I want. And I'm not always sticking on this. I will travel. You know, I go with my guys and we do things. We do fun things. I enjoy life. But I love the boredom. I love the boredom. I love sitting in the boredom and the repetition doing the same thing. So similar to enjoying the difficulty, I enjoy the boredom of the journey. And what I want to do, and I'm going to challenge you to do this, is... I'm testing myself to see how long that I can go in the grind without gratification and stimulus. Because once I actually get the stimulus and I get the gratification because of the work that I put in, it's so much better. It's amazing. It feels great. And then, of course, I want to go back and grind again and build, right? (laughs) But in the boredom, you'll find yourself. That's what we call it, delicious boredom. That's the term I use here in this channel. Delicious, delicious boredom. There needs to be periods in your journey where you completely withdraw from stimulus We call this leaving the world. You leave the world behind. You walk away from the world. You withdraw from the world. You withdraw from the stimulus. You withdraw from the haze. And you simply focus on your mission and you embrace boredom. You embrace stillness. You leave the chaos and the stimulus of more and more and more entertainment. Feel good. You leave that and walk away from it. The fifth part of this protocol, which is going to change everything for you. And trust me, if you can adopt this into your life, you will see changes. It's obsession with mastery. The guys who are always the best, the guys who always get the best results, the guys who get the best success, the guys who have the freedom, they're always obsessed with mastery over the game. And I saw this in dating, by the way. My first area of expertise was dating. I had a mentor who taught me how to understand female psychology, dating. This is seven, eight years ago now. And he taught me everything I knew about dating and about how to properly lead women, how to communicate. Yeah, I was a nightclub promoter for some of that time. And then I met this mentor in the men's dating and self-improvement space. And he taught me a lot about leadership. He was a master of the game, the game of dating. There's multiple games. There's the game of sales. There's the game of business. There's the game of real estate, right? There's multiple games, but the game we were playing was the game of dating, success with women, connecting with women. And I learned how to become obsessed with mastery. It wasn't even getting the women. It wasn't like I need to sleep with every girl. It wasn't that. It was mastery of leadership. It was mastery of communication. It was mastery of becoming a man who can control his emotions and move forward. And that mastery of that translated into mastery of sales, mastering the game of sales, mastering the game of human emotion, the game of communication at a high level, the game of leadership, the game of setting boundaries, the game of challenging in the right way, the game of empathy, this is all part of the game. The game manifests in your skill set, it manifests in your consistency, and it manifests in your results. So the question I have, again, I'm asking you a lot of questions here because this video really is a, a, a moment where you can think about who you want to be. All these videos that I make on the channel, these are not videos that I just make just to talk shit, honestly. They're videos because I want to challenge you to become the best version of yourself, learn a skill set, and the best skill set to learn is sales, learn your skill set, 
put it out into the world and give yourself freedom. I don't make this to entertain you. I make these videos because I want to challenge you to become the person who will grab the future that he wants to have. You have to grab it, my friend, because no one else is going to do it for you. And everyone else wants it instead of you. So who is going to reach out and grab it? Who is going to do it? As Goggin says, who's going to carry the boats? You know, do you want to become the master? And if you do want to become the master, what will you become a master of? You must be top 1% at something. You have to be top 1%. And that's not even difficult because top 1% doesn't mean that all 100 spaces are even. It doesn't mean that. It could just mean 90% of people simply suck, right? And then you have 10% of people that are pretty good. And out of those people that are pretty good, you're in the top 1% of those 10. That's all it means. Top 1% of something. Be in the 1% of something. Something. Play the game and win the game. But again, you have to want it. You have to want to. You have to want the protocols. You have to build the protocols. What I've seen is sales is the absolute best area to achieve mastery. That's why I talk about sales. That's why I share how sales helped me make money, how I invested my skill, how I invested my time, invested my energy, my, my money into learning high ticket closing, mastered it, and then gave myself the freedom I wanted. And I'm still experiencing that freedom. I'm still building. I'm still training guys. I'm helping others to get results. You know, the game of sales is the best game to play if you're starting out or if you're in the middle of the journey, that's for sure. I want you to play the game. I want you to win this year. I want you to win the game this year. What you can do is take this, sit on it, sleep on it, meditate on it. Don't just hear it as another YouTube video. Like, oh, this guy's cool. Subscribe. I'm going to give you more stuff. We're going to train more. I'm going to help you. I'm going to build you up. 100% I will. But I want you to take this. I want you to really sit with it, meditate on it, feel it, embrace it. Okay. And then come on in and train with me. It's free. We have a group called Quantum Level. The link is below. It's completely free to join. I don't approve everyone. So if you have like no profile picture, you have an anime character as your picture, you have some kind of nickname and you put weird answers like I want to make a thousand bucks a month, I'm not going to approve you to the group. That's just the truth. But if you want to grow, if you are serious about learning the skill set of sales, taking charge of your life, gaining freedom, I will see you there and I'm going to work with you and I'm going to push you. I'll see you on our trainings. I'll see you in what we do. Goodbye. Take care, learn, grow. This is the year for you to push and have success. That's why I'm giving you the trainings. That's why I'm sharing all this with you, okay? I'll see you on our next one. Ciao.